all right everybody welcome back to the channel we got a good one for you today today we're gonna get in depth a little bit behind the scenes of these fintech companies these card companies that are going to be pushing the envelope for the adoption of real use case of digital assets i'm not talking about speculation i'm talking about real world use case guys real world use case let's get to it my name is andrew devilbus thank you for joining me today if this is your first time here, just know that this channel is focused on enterprise grade distributed ledger technology only. I don't do any types of, uh, you know, memes or anything like that. So uh, if you want that, you're going to have to go somewhere else. But if you want the real deal, long term mindset, uh, solid portfolio theory, deep diving research through the documents, then you're at the right channel. Uh, let's get into it today. So yesterday in the private Patreon, we were deep diving Project Nexus by the BIS Innovation Hub. Um, Project Nexus is going to be combining all these faster payment systems, or it's a, it's a pilot to do that, right? Uh, there are definitely Ripple partners involved. Do it now in Paynet Malaysia. Uh, there are foreign exchange providers also. So not only are they the rails, but they also can provide FX in the future when that is there, right? So Nexus does not maintain a ledger of balances or obligations between financial institutions and payment service providers. They do not hold funds or accounts with Nexus itself. So Nexus acts as the coordinator of two separate but related instant payments across two separate payment systems. So, you know, you got these apps, right? These, these apps in the future of how it's all gonna work like a cash app or a PayPal, anything like that. They can, uh, they can use the Nexus gateways or two, actually two banks could use the Nexus gateway, right? Foreign exchange providers inform Nexus of the current rates of which they are willing to exchange from one currency to another. They complete to offer the best rates for a specific corridor, helping to ensure the competitive market. So this is how it works, right? Um, right here, the sender and the recipient, right? They both have their payment service providers, whether it's their bank or it's an app that they're using in their country. It comes through if it needs to, to swap currencies, it'll swap currencies and send it that way. But if not like a stable coin in the future or a CBDC, that's just domestic. It'll just go straight through the Nexus gateway to the recipient. And this is important because this is how a lot of it's going to work. Right. And they are using ISO 20022 standards to do this. Right. And so in the future of digital assets, um, when it's really doing all this right when it's really fluidly moving it's going to be uh you know digital assets flowing through these payment systems whether that be stable coins real world assets anything like that right because in the future of the financial system you're going to be able to pay for your coffee with your apple stock right or with your your new bank stock as we like to say over here uh we're heavy in on new bank so check this out this happened tuesday um, you know, we haven't had anything this big, uh, well, not big, but this uh, convincing that Ripple and Stellar are definitely it, right? So Ripple and Stellar meeting with the U.S. Department of the Treasury on April 23rd in Washington, D.C. Here's the picture. So you got Nellie Liang, uh, Lauren Believe, uh, head of the public policy and government at Ripple. And then you got uh, Paul Wong. Director of Product, CBDC, and, and, and uh, Institutional Assets, Stellar Development Foundation. And this is important, right? Because what are they talking about here? They're discussing the technical and regulatory requirements for upgrading the legacy capabilities of central bank money. They're also exploring the potential impl implications for consumers, investors, and businesses, right? Uh, they also delved into the long-term vision for the integration of CBDCs and tokenization and stable coins into the broader US financial ecosystem, including potential benefit for economic growth and resilience. And guys, I think this meeting was sparked off of Ripple's announcement of their stable coin. Um, you know, uh, Nelly Liang, um, what was it, about a week ago, was in a little press conference. She mentioned a non bank. Uh, payments provider that is going to be issuing its own stable coin and then next week here we go so he does have an updated picture of this right here I'm gonna try and zoom in and see who these guys are so we got Lauren believe from ripple Nellie Yang under secretary for domestic finance 
Um, we have very hard for me to see. I don't know if that's going to work. No. Um, obviously, the stellar guy we have. Uh, you know what, guys? I cannot read this for anything. My screen is so small. Um, I'm going to retweet it. I've already retweeted it. Subjective views. Give them a follow. Look through this very, very top level meeting here. Um, you know, massive as we have uh, Ripple and Stellar in the building doing their thing. Stellar has already been doing work overseas with the United Nations, you know, care and aid packages, things like that. So massive news, right? All right. Moving on here, we got Smoke Dog. Natcha can also form several financial institutions on top of Ripple's common settlement protocol listed below. And this is coming up because Ripple is a silver sponsor. Is it silver? Uh, well, Ripple is a sponsor of the Natchez uh, Faster Payments. Uh, what is it? A seminar in Miami, May 6th through the 9th. That'd be awesome to go. Yeah, silver sponsor. Sorry, it's, I mean, it's huge right in front of me, right? Um, anyway, so, yeah, you know, uh, Natchez is a big player, big deal. And, you know, they uh, have access to Ripple Tech, you know, so on top of their common settlement protocol. Several networks or clubs of financial institutions may ultimately form on top of Ripple's common settlement protocol, right? The same can be true for SEPA uh, regional banks in Europe. Uh, SEPA, we know about SEPA, right, and the Ripple connections there. So just Ripple is just plugged in everywhere they need to be. Amazing, amazing, amazing. If you're a Ripple investor, you probably are more bullish now than you've ever been in your life. Talking about Ripple partners here, HSBC from Chad Steingrabber. HSBC preparing for a new world of payments, right? You cannot forget that Chris Larson is on the tech board of HSBC, pushing the envelope for the adoption of digital assets and, you know, our, our baby XRP and uh, this DeFi ecosystem that XRP is building out on the decks and the, and the pools, the borrowing and lending, going to be a major, major player in the future of finance DeFi for institutional DeFi, I believe that is the biggest lucrative move you can play in crypto, right? Uh, you know, I do subscribe to, um, what's that man's name? He's the macro investor. Uh, man, he drinks wine and cooks good food. What's his name? Uh, anyways, uh, Raul Paul, Pau, Raul Pau um, is advocating that cryptocurrency is going to be the largest macro trade ever. Um, you know, and so if you want to take that a bit further, what is the largest trade in that macro trade of cryptocurrency? Well, that's institutional liquidity, institutional DeFi, borrowing and lending, uh, right? And so how do you find out who is, is in the first place of that race? Well, you find out what's holding it back, right? And that's regulatory clarity, sanction screening, AML, KYC, Ripple, David Schwartz have already been tackling these problems for the last few years. Nothing to worry about there. Uh, I believe in the team at Ripple. They're very innovative and forward thinking, and they are not afraid of a challenge. So at first, uh, you know, obviously, after DeFi takes off, after we have liquidity in these pools to a substantial amount, there is an active um, under underway. There's an active you know, uh, project or preparation to route the payments of RippleNet through those liquidity pools. Uh, so that is going to drive up volume massively in the DeFi ecosystem of XRP, which is going to increase the fees paid out to liquidity providers. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor, but if I was me, which I am me, and I'm very focused on the future of DeFi on the XRPO. So, uh, you know, HSBC prefer preparing for a new world of payments. One of the world's largest banks in the forefront of digital payments and understands DLT is the future. At first, they begin with stable coins. Then when banking is more comfortable, they will rely on digital assets like XRP. So they are preparing for a new world of payments. Love to see it with HSBC. Chris Larson is on the board, also on the board of Ripple uh, and was the prior CEO Fintech genius Chris Larson, I'm a major fan of his. Anything he gets his hands on, it's like he has the Midas touch. Right, so moving on, another one from Chad Steingraber. Relating back to the first post of how these fintechs, right, like Visa and MasterCard, are adopting this technology, 
Visa announced recently in their quarterly earnings report that they do have a project underway with Neom. Chad Stongrabber has dug it out of the records. So Neom plus Visa, uh, Ripple Payments XRP, it's a global pl payment platform. Um, Neom is not afraid, right? Neom going to go public in 2025, looking to buy their equity, going to be an amazing opportunity over the next 10 to 15. You guys do know I am a long-term investor here. I like to buy stocks. Uh, I like to buy digital assets that have a good five to 10 year horizon that are infrastructure based, payments based, finance based. Um, and then, you know, I believe after all this takes place, we'll see the real consumer side of this come out, uh, you know, with the whole Web3 thing. But to have a Web3, to have an Internet of Things, you first need an Internet of Value. And so we're seeing Ripple, the BIS and all these people come together to build out this uh, global network for payments and the you know internet of value here. So um, Visa launching their stablecoin analytics site monitoring USDC and Tether showcasing USDC as larger volumes. Visa Direct, right, which is their new product Visa is pushing uh, through Neom and things like that has multiple connections and Ripple payments, payments partners like Neom. So notice in the bottom left corner, Visa Crypto. All right, I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can. Um, not sure if you can see that. Maybe. Very exciting. Very exciting. Okay, another one. Visa stablecoins. USDC, guys. It's it's uh, the race is on, right? Uh, in the in the article here, um, looks like this might be a Reuters article. Uh, it says most crypto uh, transactional activity happens on exchanges, with Tether being the popular settlement stablecoin. These transactions are recorded within the exchanges on books with only occasional on-chain transactions. Uh, so obviously Visa ready to go, ready to rock this market. You know, with the recent announcement of PayPal launching their stablecoin, Ripple launching their stablecoin, USDC ready to be open and compliant. Uh, we're seeing the future of stablecoins really take shape and possibly even move in front of the central bank digital currencies that everybody has been, you know, uh, speculating about over the last few years. And quite honestly, I'd much rather spend a stable coin, uh, you know, backed by a company like Ripple and Treasuries than I would one created directly from the central bank. That's just me. Um, so, you know, another one here, Trangolo, Ripple Payments, Kazakorn Bank, QR code based transfers connecting into Hong Kong through the faster payment system, Prompt, Prompt Pay, HSBC, obviously working through Medico Custody, a service provider. Um, guys, these guys have built out an amazing uh, network. Not only has Ripple built out a network of fintechs, is they're building with other fintechs that have networks such as Th Thum. Uh, Neom with Visa, MasterCard cross border. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on and on and on. Uh, don't listen to the fudsters out there. Uh, we have a great team at Ripple. We have great developers within the XRP community getting this thing ready for its DeFi destiny. Another one coming in here, last but not least, from Mr. Man. None of you are ready for what happens next, right? D Ripple, DZ Bank, Medico, HSBC uh, equal. They're going to be going to their retail customers. So are they going to be first to market with digital assets? Are they going to be the first major bank to save, right, to, to increase their margins? Uh, the setup is in, and this is initiative, will hit the mass market very soon. Give it time to build and catch on, then boom. It will seem as though it has happened all at once because it is exponential. Let's give it a listen. HSBC, D, this is uh, DZ Bank talking about <laughs> what they're doing with Medico. DZ Bank is quite happy and we're a bit proud that we're one of the first banks in Germany which really built and made their digital custody platform going live. We can serve our clients dealing with settlement and uh, custody of digital assets focusing on crypto securities according to the German securities law. My name is Holger Meffert. I'm head of security services and digital custody at DZ Bank in Frankfurt. DZ Bank is uh, the largest German depository bank uh, with a volume of 300 million asset under depository. Beginning of 2023, we then decided that we should best work with, together with Metaco Harmonize. So what we aimed at is finding a solution that is as best as integrated in existing capital markets processes to make it as 
um, a, as efficient as possible. We started to implement and then only after 10 months we are proud to have gone live with the custard CD solution based on what Mitako is offering. We aim at uh, introducing a solution for the custody and the uh, settlement and management of digital assets. Well, the architecture of our solution evolves, of course, around, let's say, the core, which is being able to transact and administer wallets in this digital asset space on blockchains. Harmonize is one part, but we've also built a key infrastructure. We are working with analytics providers to investigate on blockchains, and we are planning on integrate our solution fully in the capital markets processes that we already have at Lizard Bank. The need of digital asset is just trying to find optimized processes and new products. And therefore we have to think about new technologies and DLT and blockchain is one which can help us to serve our clients better, to open up new products for our clients, especially the asset managers, to improve their performances if they want. Digital ledger technology aims at improving existing capital market processes. This is how we see uh, distributed ledger technology. These two processes, distributed ledger as well as existing capital markets business, will coexist the next the next decade. There you have it, folks. Shout out, Mr. Man. Shout out, DZ Bank, HSBC, Medico, Ripple. I have not been this excited about a company, about an investment in my entire life. Um, hopefully, you know. The old uh, old wisdom from Warren Buffett is you're you're not going to find 500 great investments in your life. You will find at least 20 to 30, and so those ones are going to be the most exciting. Those are going to be the ones you want to look at and you want to uh, and you want to really take seriously. Do your due diligence. Place high conviction uh, investments in certain things that that you find right. That, like to this to me, this stuff is so interesting. Uh, I love Internet of Things. Internet of value vision and how it's going to connect the world and, and bring about, you know, what I'm seeing is a, is a new bull run type of cycle. You're not going to have so much strain on the market as you had in 2008 with a liquidity crunch. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We do do deep dives in the private Patreon link below. Uh, if you, um, you know, have a 24, if you have a job and you don't have your 24 hours of the day, maybe that can serve you as a place that you can, uh, trust that you're getting great due diligence time and research under your belt so you can understand what these investments are for. So, all right, guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow or later today if some more news breaks. That's very interesting. 